Lynn, you wrote a piece, uh, I'm sorry, a thread um, on Bitcoin, not crypto recently. And one of them, one of the tweets was talking about how crypto sacrifices decentralization. And, you know, it, it's, it's clear to me, uh, at least in my opinion, that the, you know, imperative of Bitcoin uh, and Bitcoiners is to maintain that decentralization. That is the real fundamental innovation here and the real fundamental value. Uh, would you summarize your thoughts from that Bitcoin, not crypto thread? And, and maybe we can use that to, to dig a little bit deeper. Well, it's, overall, I mean, it's funny, I've written a couple threads, so it's actually hard to say which one it was, but I can summarize thoughts on the topic, which is essentially there's utility and then there's speculation, right? So when Satoshi published this white paper, he had a clear goal in mind based on all the writings he did, which is essentially that the world has a, a payments and a savings problem, right? So currencies can be diluted. There's 180 currencies in the world. Uh, I think it's something like 130 of them are like free floating. They all have these little local monopolies. Most of them are not saleable outside of their jurisdiction. Only a handful are like the dollar and a few others. Most of them degrade extremely quickly in terms of purchasing power, sometimes with these huge stepwise devaluations like hyperinflation or, or nearly so. Uh, and so if you're if you're just born into a, a, a jurisdiction that, that for whatever reason um, has a, a, a bad money, it's very hard to save. Uh, so that's, that's number one. And then number two, there's all sorts of financial censorship. Um, as is more and more technology developed, it's, it's easier for authoritarian governments to censor um, payments uh, and to uh, infringe on privacy and to control things. I actually tweeted out two things recently. One is that Nigeria is limiting how much cash you can withdraw from ATMs uh, significantly in order to push digital payments. And two, there was a story about, um, you know, Iran potentially uh, freezing bank accounts of women that don't wear, uh, you know, a head covering. Right. And so uh, th these are examples. And obviously China has been a long term example of linking a social credit score to payments where if you're on the wrong side of the CCP, you might not be able to get a train ticket, for example. You're just, you're just cut off from all sorts of services. Uh, and so Satoshi, you know, science fiction has been looking at this for a while in general, that the field's been exploring it. Uh, and Satoshi was ahead of it and he provided a technology that can solve this. And I think the innovation is he took proof of work combined it with difficulty adjustments and purposely kept the node small and simple so that people can run it. Um, and, you know, naturally things develop in ways you didn't expect. I mean, I don't know if he expected miners to break away from, from nodes. Uh, you know, there's obviously iterations that happen over time because it's, it's not led by Satoshi anymore. Um, but essentially, you know, the network is, is, is fundamentally the way it looked when it was launched, which is as, a, about as decentralized as you can get. And it, it makes it purposely makes a lot of sacrifices in order to maintain that decentralization. And like any other financial system, you can build up in layers. You can add layer, you can add side chains, you can add channel based things, you can add some custodians on top of it. There's all sorts of ways to build up a stack and increase throughput or increase code expressivity all sorts of things so that people can kind of choose what layer the network uh, works for them and their goals and, and you know, their resources. Um, and I think that's the real innovation. And I think, you know, the vast majority of what happens elsewhere is distraction, malinvestment, consumerism, basically fiat in a digital form. So, and I, and I made some exceptions. I mean, I think stable coins are obviously serving a, a, a utility purpose in many parts of the world where they, they need dollars, but have trouble accessing dollars. Um, so I've been, I've been open to that. Uh, you know, I think there's opportunities for tokenizing things, uh, basically just better tech rails, better, better settlement rails, things like that. Uh, they don't necessarily need like a floating token, especially one that, that can be completely just decoupled from the, the fundamental business underlying it. Uh, and so I think that they're, you know, the way I've described it is that, you know, the same technology that allows for peer to peer money has allowed for peer to peer scams. Right. So so, you know, you can you can transfer value between each other, but it also has allowed scammers and, and it's they're not unique to this industry. I mean, there's, there's there's scammers throughout history, but this is just a new medium, a new tech tech rails where people can create something, market to the public, hype it up and then get out of their position without ever actually having built something sustainable, something enduring. Um, and that that's just a recurring thing that happens cycle after cycle. And so I think it's natural to see a divergence in the space. And for people to say, uh, you know, I'm focusing on utility. I want to solve real world problems around the world, uh, especially problems outside of the developed world, uh, but really the whole world. And there are tools like Bitcoin and stable coins and things like that that are useful. And then there's this whole offshore casino, you know, regulatory arbitrage thing that's happening on the side and essentially saying that whatever's going on there, that's a different industry. That's a, that's a very different thing. And that this is now not really something that has almost anything to do with Bitcoin. 
And a lot of times, even those companies will rarely talk about Bitcoin. I mean, they'll, you know, I think what was the stat? Like Coinbase went like months and months and months without without mentioning the word Bitcoin in a tweet. Mm-hmm. A lot of their executives have dot ETH in their in their Twitter handles. Uh, you know, basically this the industry has has forked in, in some sense. There's obviously a Venn diagram. A lot of people own both, uh, but there are you know pretty committed people um, that I think focus on Bitcoin and say you know a lot of this, a lot of what's happening elsewhere is a distraction. Um, and what you know, f- a final point I'll make is that there's obviously smart people working in the other in the other side of the field too. There are, there are people working on on challenging cryptographic problems, challenging comp- comp- computer science problems, and no one no one blames them for that. It's really the 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 question of undue seniorage, the idea of issuing a token and then dumping that, hyping that token up, dumping that token on retail, uh, whether or not you've actually built something that lasts more than a few years. If you do if you do traditional venture capital and you either start a business or you finance in an early business, you know, that's like a multi-year, that's a very long-term project. The average life to go public is, is like eight years or more, uh, if you even make it that far. Um, if you don't, you can also get acquired, right? So a, a serious business with, with serious people actually analyzes your business and decides to buy it. Uh, and so those are ways for founders of interesting things to eventually get exit liquidity from what they built. Um, whereas the crypto industry kind of is, is about short time preference and kind of just getting to the profit part before they built something and dumping that on retail in a way that is without without proper disclosures, just, just kind of getting it out there and then profiting from it going on to the next hype cycle. Well, what you left, what you, what you built it's just not actually a business. It's not actually something sustainable. It doesn't stick around for more than one cycle. And I think that's the problem to focus on. It's not. It's not the technology itself. It's. It's, it's just the the financial misincentives that happen throughout the whole space.